Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya, home of the Spanish Grand Prix since 1991, is considered by many to be kind of boring. In the last 10 races there, it's been won by the pole sitter seven times, been won by the team on pole eight times, and the winner's list is lacking a bit of variety considering Hamilton has won the last five races. Of course, a race isn't only made exciting by what happens at the front. It does help though, not gonna lie. But Catalonia isn't exactly known for exciting racing down the field either. It's a track where it's incredibly difficult to get close to the car ahead, which means lots of races end up with cars equally spaced following each other leaving the commentators nothing to talk about apart from the chance of rain, which obviously in May in Barcelona is zero. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad track. It actually looks like it'd be really fun to drive with sectors one and two just ah, beautiful pieces of track design. And also, if you travel to the Grand Prix, you get to spend a long weekend staying in Barcelona. Fantastic, cannot recommend enough. Contrast this to most European tracks, which are just in the middle of nowhere. And so you end up camping in a field or worse, staying in Milton Keynes. No, it's not a bad track, but it is bad for Formula One races. Why is that? Well, today we're gonna to talk about some of the issues the track faces and then go for a little tour around the track and talk about some of the changes that could be made to spice up races a little bit more. My name is Mr. V. I have broken into a weather studio and it's time to discuss how we can make the Spanish Grand Prix less boring. The problem with Catalonia isn't just track design. It is a little, but it's not just that. One of the main issues is just that Formula One uses this track too much. For a long time now, this has been the home of F1 winter testing in February. It's a great track for this, but what this means is that when we get to the race in May, teams have done hundreds of laps around here, have their setups tuned almost perfectly, and the drivers know this track better than anywhere else, and so they make fewer mistakes. However, even if testing was moved somewhere else, it wouldn't make Catalonia any more suitable for getting F1 cars side by side. The track here is narrow. It's about 11.5 meters the whole way round, which means that if it was submitted today to host a Grand Prix for the first time, it would actually fail the FIA sporting regulations, which say that tracks need to be a minimum of 12 meters wide to avoid congestion. It's also a heavily aero limited track with lots of mid and high speed corners and not many straight bits in between them. In the previous generation of cars at least, this meant it was almost impossible to get up to the back of the car in front because the closer you got, the more you start to understeer around the entire track and shred your tires to pieces. You could make an argument that that's a problem with Formula One and not with the tracks. And you would be right. It is possible that this new generation of ground effect Formula One cars will bring Catalonia back to life with wheel to wheel racing and battles up and down the grid. But the fact of the matter remains that F1 cars are big and heavy and really fast. So while it's not fair to blame the tracks for these issues, it is fair to point out that the issues do exist. So now that we've discussed the issues that can't be solved by changing the track itself, let's take a little tour around this place and then we can discuss some changes we can make. We start the lap, unsurprisingly, on the start finish straight, where the cars then have an 800 meter run down to turn one. Turns one and two are a flowing right left, where the cars slow down from top speed to about 160 kph. Turn three famously is a long, basically flat right with some insane sustained g-forces that takes us up the hill towards turn four, the site of the instance you're not allowed to talk about if you work at Mercedes. Turn four, again, is a 180 longish right which widens slightly on exit. Turn five is sort of a hairpin, but also not. In slower cars, it's possible to overtake here, but in Formula One, the run down from turn four to turn five is so quick that this will never happen except on lap one. Turn six here is basically not a corner, but it takes us very nicely to turns seven and eight, which in my opinion are a beautiful, technical, sketchy left-right chicane, which tries to snap cars from understeer to oversteer. Nice. Turn nine, also sometimes called campser, is a fast, almost, almost flat follow-through. Beautiful corner. 
But again, you are going to have to lift if you're anywhere behind someone, causing you to lose time. Turn 10, Lakaisha, and turn 11 don't actually look like this anymore because they've been changed since these satellite images were taken. But it's basically the same as this outer thing here. It's a looping long left, which is really only one corner. Up until 2020, F1 was instead using this inside section here which meant this was a much heavier braking zone and therefore an overtaking opportunity, but this section is so narrow that if you didn't completely pass someone under braking, you were definitely guaranteed to stay behind. This right-hander is turn 12, which then takes us to the chicane. Since this absolute garbage was removed from Abu Dhabi last year, the chicane at Catalonia may well be the single worst piece of track on the F1 calendar. It's got competition, don't get me wrong, it's got competition, but it's right up there. Awkward off camber right at 13, faff around with your gears, awkward off camber left at 14, roll through 15, and then just plow your throttle into the floor for the completely flat final corner, New Holland, also known as turn 16. Just, just why? Now that we've seen the whole track, let's talk about some changes that we could make to spice things up around here on Sundays. The things we're trying to achieve with this are clear, but not too easy, overtaking opportunities, making sure cars can get side by side, maintaining flow. The cars don't have to be going insanely quick all the time, but sections that cause a <coughs> stop start, racing, that's the technical term, racing style are just not fun to watch. Uh, number four, just basically making the track look cool. And then five, making the track more punishing for minor mistakes, which will shake up battles a little bit. I'm not saying we need to make the track brutally difficult or insanely dangerous. I'm not trying to cause anyone to have a 51G crash here, but features which are tricky and punish mistakes, think of the very anti-outer chicane at Imola, for example, can help to spice things up every now and again when they throw someone offline or slightly off the track. Also, before we design anything, we should be clear with what we're working with. The outer fence around the track goes here, which doesn't really give us much to work with. The track may well own some of these areas outside the fence, but I didn't really fancy researching Spanish Council land registry documents for the sake of this video, so I guess we'll never know. We'll start off with our changes down here at turns one and two. This is already the best and probably only overtaking opportunity around this track, but can we make it better? Cars don't have to slow down here all that much because turn one is still a decently fast corner and less braking means less opportunity to overtake under braking. I suggest that we reprofile these corners a bit to make the corners slower, but still maintain a layout that allows cars to go through here side by side if they end up next to each other under braking from the main straight. No changes needed to run off. I mean, this wall and this hill might need to go backwards, but also you could just not do that, just, just Monaco style it, boy. Making this change would decrease the apex speed of turn one from about 160 kph to about 120 kph, which should increase the braking zone by somewhere in the region of 10 meters, giving more opportunity for a lovely little dive bomb. I would actually quite like to leave turns three and four alone. So instead, let's take a look at turn five. There's not a whole load to play with here in terms of profile change, but can we play with the elevation? From turn four down to turn six, there is a 20 meter drop, which at the moment is kind of gradual. My thinking is, why not raise the entry to turn five and then dig out the exit to turn five so the entire 20 meter drop is in the middle of the corner. Laguna Seca corkscrew style. This is already a slightly tricky corner as it is downhill trail braking, um, which does lead to some front locking, hence all these black marks here. Why not just turn this up to 11? Just make it insanely steep and way tougher. Change the heights, so now you're trail braking while literally falling down a hill. Separate the good drivers from the great ones, or at the very least those on old tires from those on new ones, and encourage, just encourage, a few little trips into the gravel here and there. Shake up the order a little bit. Okay, okay. So now we get to the reason why you've stuck around in this video for this long. The chicane! The chicane! In order to change the chicane, we need to understand why it's there in the first place. It was added in 2007 to reduce speeds around this corner, Europe car, but more importantly, this corner, the final one. The issue here is the exit of the final corner. 
even with the chicane, modern cars are getting here at about 250 kph. Without the chicane, they would be getting here probably close to 300 kph. And actually without the chicane, they would be doing that kind of speed on entry as well. If someone lost it on entry at 300 kph here, they would meet this wall 1.3 seconds later. If they lost it on exit here at 300 kph, they would meet this wall 1.2 seconds later, and they would still be going 300 kph. As Roman Grosjean showed us in Bahrain, this is bad. My thinking, therefore, is to actually change the profile of the final corner to make it slower, which means we don't then need to artificially lower entry speeds. If we change to something like this, apex speeds will go down from 220 kph plus to something more like 150 or 160. Add in this little exit kink here, reduce exit speeds even more, make it a little more challenging, and also it just kind of looks cool. And hopefully we have a much safer final corner. At this point, I would love to say this now means we don't need the chicane and we can go back to using the proper Europe car layout that bikes use. However, this is probably still too fast for modern Formula 1 cars, even with the improved safety since the chicane came in. So instead, I'm suggesting that we replace this trash with something a little more flowing. Keep turn 13 as it is, but now have an almost straight line down to turn 50. We keep this little bend on the exit of 13 just to stop people going completely flat around here, kind of similar to turns 6-7 in Australia, which then altogether makes turn 15 significantly less awful, but still not too fast. The bike layout gets to keep Europe car, F1 gets to get rid of the chicane, the final corner changes, yes, but now it's more of a traction limited corner rather than an aero limited corner, which actually should give some advantage to people running on fresher tyres, hopefully making the strategy of this track a little more interesting. And with that, we're now back to the start finish straight and our new track layout looks like this. When discussing issues at the Spanish Grand Prix, I think it is important to discuss the things other than the track design, which caused the racing to be boring here. I've already gone over some of these things, but what can we do about them? Well, one quite simple thing would be to have testing and the race at different venues. I've seen people suggest that the race get moved to a different venue, but honestly, I don't think that's the way to go. Barcelona, regardless of the track, is really a great place to host a Grand Prix. It's the second largest city in Spain. Um, it's a great place to go for a long weekend, and it's really, really easy to get to from anywhere in Europe. The other options for a Spanish Grand Prix are Jerez, which is in the middle of nowhere. Aragon, which is really in the middle of nowhere, and Ricardo Tormo, which actually I guess is not too far from Valencia and has had some decent racing in other series in recent years, but it does look like a giant car park. So there you go, the choice is yours. Now you may be thinking, oh, Jerez, that's a cool circuit. The issue is though, that the Grand Prix has to actually make money. Jerez 97 is one of the most iconic races of all time. Sadly though, Almost no one showed up to actually watch it, and so the organisers didn't host another one because it didn't make enough money. No, I think the race should stay in Barcelona, and maybe make use of some of these layout suggestions that I've put forward here. Organisers, if you're watching, you can reach me on my contact details down below. I've reduced my designer's fee, it's only 10 million euros now, so think about it. And instead, I think testing should be moved back down to Jerez south coast of Spain in February and it doesn't even matter if no one shows up to come watch because they're not allowed in anyway. Ideal! Obviously the people who own the Catalonia track probably don't want this because I would imagine F1 pays them for testing as opposed to races where the track has to pay F1. But they may well be able to make that money back if we improve the racing at Catalonia and therefore more people want to come and they can charge more for tickets. Win-win! Maybe unless you're actually buying a ticket but then again if you're buying a ticket and it costs more but then the racing is better is that better overall maybe swings and roundabouts i don't know so that about does it for this video which is probably significantly longer than i had initially planned it would be if you disagree with any of my proposals please let me know what you would do down below maybe you love the chicane if you do you are insane please seek professional help but before you do that leave a comment down below like this video if you liked it subscribe so you don't miss the next one and until then i've been mr v stay safe and i'll see you guys later